this video, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous anemone flower. But before we do, let's talk about the paper that I used to make it. After years of designing and making paper flowers, I have found that my all-time favorite is this lightweight frosted paper. So I'm so excited that we are introducing six different packs that we've made for you. Each of the packs is a 12 by 12 size and there's four colors and five sheets each. For the greens, we have a conifer pack and a succulent pack, then the melon, citrus, stone fruit, and berry. And each of them has that frosted on both sides. So let's get started making this flower. This frosted paper anemone is one of my favorites. In fact, it is the flower that's on the front of all the packs. Now I chose a color from the berry pack, which is one of the purple lavenders, but they do come in all different colors, sometimes in that crisp black and white. So pick whatever color speaks to you because it will be gorgeous. Now, if you do have some black paper, you'll want to make sure it's a lighter weight paper and you can cut the centers out of black. But if you don't, here's the trick that I'll use. I went ahead and cut the centers out of the same color as I did the petals. And I did this on the cutting machine. This would be a little bit more difficult to cut by hand. However, there is a version that you can cut by hand. It's just not quite as delicate. And I have here just this marker. It's a water-based marker and it has this brush point. So I'm just gonna use the marker to blacken the tips and I'll do it on both sides. Flip it over, it's very, very delicate. These remind me of eyelashes. Speaking of which, let's put these on my eyes so I can see these tiny eyelashes. Then on this one, I will actually cover I'll use the other side. I like this side better. I'll cover the whole thing. But just one side. You can use any kind of marker. A Sharpie will work. Water base or alcohol base markers will work on this as well. And I'll just set that aside and let that dry. The next thing I'll want to do is start adding some shape to the petals. And for that, I'm gonna use this curling tool. You can also use the edge of your scissors if you want, if you don't have a curling tool or some sort of a scraper tool works as well. But this is made specifically for this. So I'm going to use my thumb and put the thumb on the edge with the paper in between. I'll go and curl each petal once straight. Then I'll curl each petal sideways and then again on the other side. So you get almost a three-way curl and that gives it the best cut possible. You can see how that looks. There's a lot of shape there. I'll do that to the other set of petals and those are ready to assemble. I'll also do the same thing to the leaf. I'll go curl it down every other one and then I'll flip it over and curl these other two down so that we have this really beautiful kind of tangly look that these leaves often look like. So for the centers, I'll want to curl those as well. We have to be really gentle because these are delicate with the tiny little cuts. So I'm actually holding almost over the top of the ends where they hit the center so that I don't tear them and just roll it right along your thumb to get a really nice curl on that tip. Go all the way around and then use your fingers to bend the center of the tips towards to almost create this ball. And if you want to, you can add a little glue to that to keep it in a ball shape, or it'll stay pretty well on its own. On the stain piece, again, you'll very, very gently just roll the paper. Don't pull it because that will make it tear, but just kind of roll it along the thumb to give it some shape. I'm going very gently, so I'll go back over it a couple times to get as much curl as I need. And I do like the unevenness of it, so you can kind of use your fingers to press that as well. And now we're ready to assemble. So I have here a high temperature hot glue gun, and I like this for this paper. High temperature, you'll need it to really get that stick. And this is the Sure Bonder with a very pointed tip. Add a dot of glue on the back, and I'll place that right in the center. And I'll set that aside and let that cool. And for the petals, just a dot of glue in the center of one set and then offset the others so that it looks like this. Then I'll add just a touch of glue 
I try not to stack my glue because if you hit a hot glue on top of a hot glue, it will actually melt the glue underneath. So I did a little ring there and then placed that right in the center. Now, if you are using this for a piece of art or something where you're gluing the flowers onto something, maybe even a wreath, you don't really need stamps. But if you wanna put this in a bouquet, I'll show you how you can do that. I have this little piece. This is my sepal that would go on the back. And I have here an 18 gauge wire. I don't need all of it. This is paper covered. I prefer paper covered wires. I'll cut it in half. And then I will do a bend here on the tip. Slide that wire into the hole. And then I'll add glue right on top of that and pretty much cover this whole staple. And then I'll place that on the back and just hold that in place until it cools. Then you can bend your flower head any way you would like it so it fits in your bouquet. For the leaves, if you look at the actual plants of the anemone, you'll notice that the leaves are often really close to the flower itself. So the way I like to finish this is just add some glue onto the base. You can actually cut the stem of the leaf off if you'd like to and just glue it right underneath. And there's your finished anemone. This flower is so pretty and versatile and you can use it for many projects. So you can find the pattern below. We have it in both an SVG cup file that you can use for your cutting machine, or we have a PDF if you'd like to cut it by hand.